For people that are new to my channel, or this is the first video you ever watched of mine, because I know there's a lot of new people tuning in because of this duck situation. First of all, the reason I'm talking all messed up is because I just had half my teeth removed. This will be like that for a few weeks. The second thing is that uh, I'm, I'm a resident of the city of Chicago, born and raised in the Chicago area, man, 30 plus years. Uh, and I'm a former substitute teacher in the public high schools uh, in the city of Chicago. Um, a lot of my work was like on the west side of the city. I didn't do too much on the south side. Um, that's where Duck is from. I was mainly west side. But the west side, if you're from Chicago, you know the west side and the south side deals with a lot of the same issues. It's a lot of the same demographics. Uh, and actually, like the worst neighborhoods in the city are on the west side. So as far as violence. So it's the same issues. Um, and having talked to many, many parents, okay, the most common thing that I ran into uh, with like moms and the role that they played in how their young men grew up, okay, in these situations is that they really didn't have enough help around them, okay? They, most of them didn't, you know, they had extended family. They maybe had like um, a, a mom, like a, the grandma, you know, or one of her sisters or something like that, that would, you know, come around and give advice or maybe contribute some resources and stuff like that. But these moms, a lot of them, they were trying to juggle a job, sometimes two jobs. Some of them weren't, but, you know, uh, they'd be trying to manage their son's lives, okay? Especially when we're talking about moms with multiple sons and trying to keep track of all of their son's activities and what he's doing, stuff like that, while also providing for the family. And they're trying to do all of this by themselves, okay? So the emotional and the mental strain and stress of you know just managing all this is all on the mom okay now she's doing this at the same time in a neighborhood where you know it's dangerous i mean to even walk outside your house it's very dangerous so that adds another stress okay so she's trying to control where her son is going his movements and all this kind of stuff and the son is out in this is out in the you know peer environment that he's at in school dealing with a totally different set of social pressures that are pushing him in the opposite direction from the direction that his mom is trying to push him okay there are very few moms and i'm not saying there's none because there, there's some but there's very very few almost none who dream about their sons being gangbangers that, that are going to end up dead in the streets like you talk to any mom out there that's not what she wants her mom to, her son to be you know, they all want their sons to go on to have office jobs, be, you know, doctors, lawyers, engineers, stuff like that. Nobody's dreaming that their son's going to be, you know, a picture on a shirt and all that kind of thing. A lot of them don't even want their sons to be rappers. Uh, now, like I said, there's there's exceptions to that rule. There are there are young moms out there in Chicago who say, I want my baby to be a savage when he grows up. And, you know, they're bragging that their baby's going to, you know, be the out his name in the streets and stuff like i mean there's moms like that and for those moms obviously they're just part of the problem most moms don't want to do that so i'm making this video i made a video before uh about mama duck like in response to uh when a lot of people were getting on her after she spoke uh about epig duck's death and people were saying like get real you know he he wasn't uh you know, sweet. He was, he was involved in that life and stuff like that with the way that she was speaking after he died. And I said, like, she can't just get up there and throw him under the bus. She has to talk like that. She has to say positive, good stuff when it's in the public eye. She can't throw dirt on her son's name, like, in front of the world. She's supposed to say, you know, my son was a good boy and all that kind of stuff. So I'm making this video, now a second video like that, because I see a lot of people getting on her again, okay, now that he, now that, you know, this indictment is coming out. Uh, specifically, uh, Hassan Campbell, I, I just want to address, and again, you know, I respect a lot of the stuff Hassan Campbell says, man, but uh, a few of the things that, you know, he had said about Mama Duck were just straight off, and it's, but it's not just him, okay, there's a lot of people doing this, like on social media, man, so the first thing is that, uh, as far as, like, you know, admonishing her, or using her as an example to tell other women what not to do with their sons, the, the key thing is time and place, okay? There's a time for something and there's a place for something. The, the time and the place to address a woman like that is like in private, you know what I'm saying? That's something you say privately in the DMs in like a tactful manner. Like to say that in public and to go at her, even if you're speaking some truth, 
um it's just the context you know what i'm saying like there, there's a uh i forget there's like some proverb i think it's like a verse in the bible or something like that where you know you're not supposed to like check somebody in front of other people like at the dinner table you know what i'm saying like you take him privately to the side later and tell him you know the issue with him you don't do it in front of everybody because then okay now his shame is right there on the line and now it just like it makes it unconstructive it doesn't lead to anything positive so yeah that would be that would have been something to tell her in private publicly okay publicly what, what we can say in, in her defense he was saying you know okay she lost five kids or whatever first of all i'm i'm fairly certain the girl died in a fire okay so that wasn't to the streets the second thing is that brick and duck both died as grown men they didn't die when they were in her care okay they died years after they left her care so at that point so basically she did her job okay while she, while they were in her care while they were in her care they they lived they survived okay after they're grown men okay grown men with their own kids their own families they want to go off and live that life she has no control over that yes there's things that a mom can plant in her son in her sons when they're growing up that can influence them to make the right decisions when they become grown men but at the end of the day that's up to them when they when they get older and not only that but duck had money like a lot of money so he had the ability to go anywhere he wanted to go like literally anywhere i mean duck was i believe a millionaire so there was no financial restrictions on where he chose to live and you see the location where he lived he was making smart moves as far as like where he was at you see what i'm saying he, he wasn't like just hanging out in the hood on the block now brick that's a different story brick was literally right in the hood you know on social media talk like basically dropping his location he was sliding through o block you know on you know going with his daughter on live and the guy I mean, brick was making every mistake you can make duck was not doing that duck was moving very smart he never moved with his kids anywhere you know he was going out and uh hanging out with his family only like way out in the suburbs you know going downtown you know that's conventional wisdom would have said that what duck was doing was a was a, a smart decision it turned out not to be that but okay that's you know he didn't make like some seriously dumb move okay to get killed he just it was his time you know at the end of the day so yeah that you can't put that on her what happened to to duck and brick the other two that he mentioned i'm not sure that she had two other kids that got killed by the streets those might have been like her nephews yeah you can't put the daughter and you can't put brick and you can't put duck on her none of those on her uh the other thing is that he said that the song uh you know the duck dropped right before uh he passed was what got him killed there's really like no indication that that's true okay he was into it with those guys for years they were looking for him for years matter of fact he had just been shot not too long before that on the east side of chicago he had gotten shot in the shoulder okay and uh he had just recently signed a deal uh so i had put out the report saying that he had gotten shot in the shoulder and then you know people were telling me like chill with all that he's gonna lose his deal with him so then i actually pulled it back and lied for him and said you know actually i was wrong he, he didn't get shot in the shoulder well he really did okay that, that that was actually i was lying for duck on that situation you know i apologize to anybody that you know for lying but i was doing it so he could keep his deal i knew he got shot in the shoulder i saw the police report he got shot in the shoulder carlton weekly okay so he barely escaped death like a few I think it was like a few weeks or a few months before he finally got killed so my point is that was before he dropped that song okay he almost got killed barely escaped death before he dropped that song so what does that tell you it tells you that the song you know the song didn't put him in a position that he wasn't already in uh so yeah that was incorrect the other thing is that you know he said that she should have warned him that muop was going to come get him I mean, first of all, we don't know if Muop is the one that did it. Even if he was, Duck was dealing with guys that were more prolific killers than Muop. Okay, if if Muop even did it, I don't know if he did it or not. But Duck was dealing with more like serious killers than that for years, for years. Okay, so he was in the war like back then. Okay, we're talking way back when everybody from 600, like all these notorious killers from 600, were all free okay when everybody from lamron everybody from front street i'm talking about guys who are like doing like decades or life right now for murder all these guys were free when duck hopped into it so he survived all that he 
stayed out the way of all those guys all those years okay i'm talking guys coming through 63rd shooting up the block and stuff like that duck survived all that so if after all of that she had come to him and been like you know you shouldn't have you shouldn't be talking like that because muop might come get you that would sound like like that that would make like no sense after everything that he's already been through and all the situations he's already been through that the other thing is that uh he was taught and this is not directly related to mama duck but he was talking about the police and why did the police let duck bleed out because you know and he speculated that the police let duck bleed out because duck was part of the problem okay i've i've uploaded videos on my channel of cops getting shot okay police officers getting shot Okay, and the police did not, like, roll the guy to the hospital. They didn't transport the guy to the hospital. Hassan said that, you know, they didn't take him right to the hospital themselves. The police didn't because he was part of the problem. They wanted to let him bleed out. I've uploaded videos, like I said, of cops, their own homies, getting shot. And they're not, they're not doing nothing. They're just leaving him there because an ambulance is right on the way. Okay, and it's their job to clear the scene for the ambulance and nothing else. And if they administer medical care or try to, okay, if they try and intervene medically in the situation, then they can be held liable if something goes wrong and he dies. So Duck at the scene was still conscious. He was still like awake. So he wasn't like, you know, dead, totally unresponsive for them to give him CPR. As, as far as I know, he was still breathing at the scene. So... You, you don't give him CPR if he's breathing on his own. You see what I'm saying? He's got a heartbeat, obviously, if he's still breathing. So what would there have been for them to do other than to just, you know, try and patch the bullet wounds? But if you do that and you move one of the bullets in the process of trying to do that and you make it worse, okay, now if he dies, the family can sue you. Plus, Duck wasn't really part of the problem. Duck, if you're, if, you know, if you were in tune with Duck, was one of the guys who was trying to put a stop before that song, he was trying to put a stop to the war. He was releasing songs actually giving credit and respect to the other side. And that wasn't the first time that he was doing that. He was doing that on social media before that. He was one of the only guys in Chicago, Duck was, that would just tell it like it is. He would say, yeah, the BDs are with it too. If they catch you, they'll kill you too. He would he would be honest about like what it is. Yeah, they they did that to us, you know. He He was one of the only guys that you could actually go to for the truth. Very few gang members will give you that. Most gang members are like, you know, oh, yeah, they ain't on nothing, you know. And meanwhile, like, they've killed, like, 10 of their homies and talking about, like, yeah, they're not on nothing, you know, they're sweet. Okay, well, they're not going over to their hood just, like, you know, chilling on their block because it, it's obviously not sweet. Well, Duck wouldn't say that. Duck would give you the real, okay? So on top of that, he was actually, like, talking about those guys in a way that made it seem, okay, not, like, overtly talking about it, but making it seem like he wanted this to stop okay and if i'm not mistaken uh duck was part of a meeting i think that was arranged by bo deal okay where he had it was duck and i think little jay was in on it too uh with several other of like the top guys um like the more, more well-known older guys from those sets trying to actually arrange a, a truce and duck was in on that if i'm not mistaken uh this i'm getting this like third hand but i'm if i'm not mistaken that that meeting actually happened and duck was with it he was trying to make a truce so duck wasn't part of the problem duck was part of the solution okay duck was part of the solution at least at least some of the time i'm not gonna say all, he he did stuff to contribute to the bullcrap to it in the beginning but later on okay once he got kids and got older so he he also too had a personality where it was like you could work with him okay if if you got into it with duck over something like there were there were situations where guys would diss even some of duck's dead homies and duck would say look you know i'm a man at the end of the day we can talk this out we can patch this up like there are very few gang members let alone i mean very few people let alone gang members in chicago that do that bro he was doing that like he was a guy that you could if you got into it with him you could resolve it by talking like he was willing he was willing to do that there are very few guys who won't let their pride get in the way of that and uh so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't say the duck was part of the problem at all man uh and you know the cops stay up on everything that's going on with them so they probably knew that too he, he also wasn't like overtly like anti-cop i mean all gang members are anti-cop but he wasn't like he he wasn't like you know one of these people always out here talking about like you know cbdk and all like he, he wasn't really doing that stuff he was you know yeah the police are there but 
they're not our main problem. Like the BDs are our main problem. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, it, it just goes to show you if you want a clear indication of how not obvious it was that Duck got himself killed by saying any particular thing, just look at how many different fingers were being pointed in all these different directions after he got killed. After he got killed, people weren't even blaming all block. They were pointing the finger at all these other gangs, like talking about oh, it must have been these guys, it must have been those guys. Some some people weren't even blaming gangs. Some people were blaming like other stuff, like all these conspiracy theories, because it wasn't obvious. You know, if Duck had been a, a person that was like really super disrespectful towards the other side or had done a lot of stuff to the other side, okay, then it would have been like, okay, yeah, it must have been that. Well, it wasn't that. Plus, uh, there's no street rumor, okay? No street rumor. And if anybody wants to dispute this, feel free. No street rumor that I ever heard in my life that, that Duck killed anybody. I don't believe Duck had any bodies. No, no murders. Okay, I, he never killed nobody. Rapping, okay, saying stuff like that. But he wasn't, Duck was not even close to one of the most disrespectful rappers. He was like, for a drill rapper, Duck was like <laughs> respectful, okay, compared to the rest of them. Like, if you heard some of the rest of them, man, Duck wasn't even, he wasn't even in like the top 100 most disrespectful rappers, man. So you can't say that got him killed. And then another thing that I heard people saying was that, well, she should have gotten them like out of the hood. Okay. A lot of people don't know. Duck and actually Billionaire Black too. And I think a couple of, a couple of other of those guys too, uh, actually used to live when they were younger up north. Okay. In an area that's like, I think 70% white. Okay, very few people know this. They think he's from like the ghetto, 63rd, like born and raised over there. He's from Howard Street. Duck is from Rogers Park, the same neighborhood that that I'm from. Okay, that and I'm white. Okay, EB bands. Uh, I mean, there's gangs up there. Obviously, there's Loke City and PBG, but that's, I mean, compared to 63rd, that's like nothing. So he actually used to live up there. I'm talking about when he was younger, in her care, before he became a grown man. Okay, when he was in Mama Duck's care, he was up there. Okay, I didn't know who he was back then, but, you know, he was, he was like friends with all those Loke City guys. So she did have him out of the hood. Now that's still kind of, that's like a semi-hood, but nowhere near 63rd, okay? Like having him up there was, was, was the best move you can, you can make basically back then. So she did do that, okay? She, she wasn't like, you know, trying to raise him in the ghetto and stuff. Uh, as far as later... Uh, when he moved over there later, that I believe was when he was all already like almost grown. So yeah, at that point he was like already, I think getting his own money and already grown. So, you know, at that point it's his choice. You know what I'm saying? At that point it's his choice. You can't put it on her anymore. And up being up North, he had exposure, you know, when you're, when you're in the, like heart of the hood okay and you like barely ever leave your own neighborhood especially like when you're on the deep south side a lot of these kids like that that hood culture is like really all they know okay well that wasn't all duck new when you're up north in, in an area like east rogers park you get exposure to like cultures from all over the world that's an immigrant gateway community okay you've got caribbean african middle eastern indian uh bosnians like there's there's people from everywhere up there immigrants okay and you're going to school with all of them so you're not you know just like in a culturally insular environment you get exposure to different walks of life people that don't have nothing to do with this gang culture and you get plenty of like like i would say cultural education about how you can live a different life other than what you know those guys are doing in sdl so he had that man he had plenty and you can tell by the way duck talked that he had that that type of like real life education, getting used to all those other people. You know, he, he was like, Duck wasn't your typical gangbanger. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm smoking on ops. I'm doing that. He wasn't that. He was like a more, he, he spoke like a more mature guy. You see what I'm saying? So she gave him everything that he needed, man. You know, as far as that. Now, a little bit later on when guys started dying, okay, down there on 63rd, then it becomes a situation where, okay, you're a parent, right? You got to convince your son not to not to get involved in a situation that's driven by extreme emotion when guys die like when tuka died okay and when when you have other friends that are dead like they've been murdered by the other side guys that live like a couple blocks away and even if they don't live a couple blocks away guys that you personally knew 
okay then it that takes on a whole nother dynamic man to where a parent it's very difficult for a parent to override that even if the parent moves them way out to you know who knows where your son is going to bed every night thinking well that other man's family the guy that killed my homie you know they got their son still alive okay he's not he's not being missed by them they don't feel the pain i'm over here feeling the pain i want them to feel the same pain that i feel now you got to deal with that as a parent and you might not even be aware that he's thinking those thoughts knowing that that's going on like i've been in school where these kids you know they've something's happened to one of their homies or something and they're they are straight up sweet i'm talking pacing the halls like screaming at the top of their lungs talking about i'm gonna kill him i'm gonna kill him like and trying to talk them down from that bro is like next to impossible so these situations get very emotional once somebody dies okay and i think tuca was first blood so in other words duck side didn't do that first they didn't take it to that level as far as i know as far as i know it might have been reezy if it was reezy i this is this is years ago so i don't know but yeah those are tough situations man you know what i'm saying you can't just reduce that to oh she was negligent she didn't do the right thing bro try to do the right thing when your son has lost a homie okay a guy that he looked at as like his blood brother you know <laughs> That, that's like trying to stop a typhoon at that point as far as emotion now just in closing guys there's uh one thing that i will say to moms in chicago okay any moms in chicago especially young moms whose sons are you know grammar school age at this point okay who still have a chance to mold their son and to mold the way that he's gonna you know think when he gets to be the age where the other kids start hopping off the porch so to speak into the streets uh it's very important to have him in an area of the city where gang culture does not permeate every aspect of the teen peer pressure environment and in areas like woodlawn in areas like inglewood garfield park um lawndale all you have to do is look at the homicide numbers just just look at the just look at a map of the shootings in Chicago look at the neighborhoods where most of this is going on and you'll find a common denominator in these neighborhoods if you go into the high schools okay I never worked in the grammar schools there but if you go into the high schools and observe the kids everything that they talk about is like infused with gang lingo gang references like this is even kids that are not involved in the streets okay the music they listen to, the, the the people that they're in tune with, okay, as far as like the celebrities, like the top gang members in their neighborhood are like celebrities to these kids. You know, if gang members are celebrities to your kids, then even if they're not your kid's specific role models, even if your kid is not like overtly aspiring to be like that person, because not all of them are, but even if they, they, you don't even want personalities like that to be in your kid's psyche on a day-to-day -day basis. You see what I'm saying? You don't want your kid to be thinking about guys in that lifestyle all the time and have guys like that in their face when they step outside the door, okay? Because guys like that, even if they don't overtly pressure your kid to get involved in that stuff, just being around them, okay, and just having your kid observe those people and the way that they live has an influence on them, and it's usually a draw towards that lifestyle, okay? You tend to imitate the people that you're around, so you want your kid to be around people that are not headed to jail or an early death. And in those neighborhoods, everybody's not on that path, obviously. Like, there's plenty of guys who make it out and, you know, go on to lead uh, professional lives, take care of their kids and everything like that. But pretty much everybody, okay, I will say this, pretty much everybody in those neighborhoods at least knows one, pe one person and most guys know multiple people that are involved in that life okay and that carries with it a threat that that person is going to become an influence on your son so those are neighborhoods where i tell moms on facebook this every almost every day i say there's cheap apartments up north in edison park montclair Sauganash, areas where gang culture is is like something that most of the residents there don't even know about okay there's cheap apartments up there if you're willing to sacrifice living space you might have to move down from the two-bedroom apartment to the studio and everybody sleep in the same room my point to these moms is that it is worth it it's worth it it's worth being cramped okay you're not going to get the same size place 
in those neighborhoods that you're going to get in the hood, but it is big time worth it. Okay. And if you raise your kids in those neighborhoods from the time that he's young, the odds are statistically that he's not going to grow up. Okay. Even if he, you know, observes that culture from a, everybody in, in Chicago at, on some level observes that culture from a distance because it's going on in the city. But the odds are that he's going to grow up to be like the people around him in that neighborhood who are not on that, on that route. So that's my advice to these moms, man. You have to move, okay? Even the, even if you've grown up there, some people can become desensitized to it and start to conceptualize it as normal. And that's a problem with a lot of moms. They see this as normal, you know, especially teen moms. They're at a young age. They maybe haven't stepped outside the, their neighborhood very much, you know? And so that, you know, culture that they're around in that neighborhood is all they know. If you live in a neighborhood where, you know, it has like one of those astronomically high homicide rates, grab any random group of teenagers, which, I mean, everybody doesn't get the chance to do that. As a substitute teacher, I got a chance to do that. You just sit them down, just sit down 10 random teenagers from like, you know, Garfield Park or whatever, and just listen to them talk about life and the way they think about life. And you're going to immediately observe like several things that are going to lead to conflict in their life later on. So this comes from the influences that are around them, okay? This comes from the older guys in the neighborhood, the guys who are hanging out on their block. Like, this comes from talking to these guys. This is why it's very important not to have them around those people. M moving is essential. Uh, and, you know, if both of the parents, the guy and the girl, both have a mentality that is trending towards that, you know, that street, like, lifestyle then there's not a lot of hope that the kid is not going to be in that environment. But like, let's say you're a guy, okay? And you're, you know, trying to get this girl, she's good looking or whatever. But she's one of those girls who is really like big time fanned out with all this drill stuff. And she's crushing hard on like the, the gang members in the neighborhood and the drill rappers. And, you know, she wants a savage, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Those are red flags, bro. You don't want a girl that's attracted to savages, okay? You just don't. Those are you do not want to reproduce with those kinds of girls. You don't want to talk to them. You don't want to have nothing to do with them. I don't care how nice their body is and all that stuff. You don't want to have nothing to do with them, okay? Because someday your son is going to be getting raised by this girl. You got to remember that, okay? This is for your kids. You know, the time to start being a parent is actually before the kid is born, okay? When you choose who you're child's other parent is going to be that's when the job of parenting really starts but for the parents for, for whom it's too late they already have teen kids that are involved in that stuff there's a clear line for parents and i'm not saying this to address mama duck or anybody else's mom this is just in general for parents uh in chicago and probably in in other cities too any conversation what whatsoever with the guys that your kids are into it with is absolutely off limit like that's that's a that should be a clear line like no not at all like you don't say a word to them doesn't matter how many times they diss your son doesn't matter how disrespectful they get you don't say a word okay especially the other thing i would say if, if you're a parent of a gang member in chicago and he's already choosing that life and you're trying to convince him to get out of it but he's not listening to you there's nothing you can do if you're a parent i would not have a social media account period Okay, because even if you're not coming at them, which is going to be a big temptation, okay, these guys are talking to your son, they're sending death threats to your son, they've, they're trying to kill your son, it's going to be a big temptation to, you know, say something about them. You don't want that temptation to be there in the first place. But secondly, it gives the, the, the ops, your son's uh, rivals, it gives them a target, you know, somebody to basically come at when they're not coming at your son. Like, okay, they can come at his mom now. You got, a, you got this social media account. You want to be like invisible, okay? And there's moms in Chicago that are like this. You don't want any of your son, son's rival gang members to even know that you exist. No, they don't, you don't want them to know your name, what you look like, none of that, okay? Because, you know, you're also, I mean, just from a practical standpoint, it's another way that they can get his location, okay? They can track you and then wait till you meet up with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, it actually presents a real present danger to your son to have them know who you are. So that's a that's a clear line. The other thing, obviously, no like romantic relationships with anybody that's I would say younger than you. Like no none of your son's friends, none of the ops, none of that. Because the the, the 
cold hard fact is a lot of times friends that are at one point friends later become enemies and if you have a relationship with one of his friends even if it's one of his older friends like let's say you know they're gang members your son is like maybe 15 okay and he's got a a big homie who's like 25 okay and you're you're his mom and you're 30 okay so you're thinking well it's not that big of a deal you're i'm 30 he's 25 he's cute you want to get into a relationship with this guy okay he's your friend he's your son's friend now well tomorrow he might be one of his ops okay you see what i'm saying because i've seen it where you know even guys from like the same like cluster of blocks or whatever one street will start going against another street this is like within the same hood that used to be all together so and then now you're in a relationship with one of his ops you know when you didn't even think that was going to be an op like this can happen so yeah i would just keep all that off limits man any parents that cross that line are inviting huge negativity and evil upon their family later so that's all i got to say in this video this is already going too long but rest in peace to uh to duck man condolences to mama duck and yeah no disrespect to hassan campbell or anybody else but i just felt like that those things needed clarifying because i've just been hearing so much inaccurate stuff about him your boy when you see the report i'm out